All right, um, I said I'm going to do a little review for you. Um, like I said in the email, on your exam, you either have to graph the side function or cosine function. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of how it looks like on the exam. <clears throat> say, example number, let's say this is number one, graph two periods of given function. I'm just going to pick the cosine function, okay? Um, psi is going to be exactly the same thing. So say for y equal three cosine of one half x minus pi over four minus two. And then they ask you to answer some question. Um, down here. I'll leave a little space there and I'll tell you why. Amplitude, All right, what is the amplitude? Um, period. I suggest you go back to my lecture note and take a look at the step, how to do these first and try to do it yourself, practice it. Nothing like practice, right? You can watch me, you can watch me doing this many, many times, but without you doing anything to yourself, um, you're gonna have trouble doing things on the real exam, right? The key value. Okay, so on exam, if something looks like that, some of you are going to get uh, the version with the cosine, other is going to get with the sine. But what I'm doing right now is the exact same procedure for both functions, okay? Now, before we do anything, we need to convert this into a standard form. Do you guys remember the standard form? A cosine of B, and then x minus c over b, right? And then plus something, I'm gonna call um, plus d here, okay? And <clears throat> so we have to factor out the one half here, right? So that means this one is y equal three cosine of, I'm gonna factor out the one half. What's left for the first term is x, right? For the second term, I'm gonna rewrite negative pi over four. But what happened when I distribute one half back? Well, one half times x is one half, but one half times negative pi over four is no longer negative pi over four. We need it to be consistent with the original function, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this with two over one. So one half and two over one cancel, right? You, you get your negative pi over four back, and then minus two. Let's clean this up a little bit. 3 cosine, and I'm going to put the bracket here just to match up with our formula. x minus the 2 and the 2, I'm sorry, the 2 and the 4 cancel, um, so it'll be pi half, right? Pi half minus 2. And this is the one that we're going to focus on from now on, right? or at least for answering those four bullet points. So amplitude will be three. What does so what is the height of the graph? Amplitude is three, so the height of the graph is going to double that, right? It'll be six. We'll talk about that later. The period for psi or cosine function is going to be, let me use blue for the answering. It's going to be two pi over b, right? That's the period of psi or cosine. Well, the one that, that you that you kind of make it into the the standard function. Now I can I can from here I can I know that my b is will be one half, right? C over b will be pi over two. So so periods is two pi over b, which is two pi over one half, which is two pi times two over one, which is four pi. So the period is four pi. Now the phase shift is C over B. By the way, the phase shift is your starting point, okay. which is pi half. 
let's find the three key values. Again, I suggest you look at my lecture note before you actually watch this video for how to graph the sine or cosine function, okay? And try a few for yourself. <clears throat> All right, for x1, the formula is c over b. Well, what's c over b? Pi over 2. So x1 is pi over 2. Now, don't, don't start on x2 yet. You need to find the, the y coordinate. I call that y1. What you can do is you can plug in pi over 2 into the original one. So you replace x with pi half, right? And then and then calculate it out. Let's see, um, 1 half times pi half is pi over 4, right? Pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Um, yeah, 3 times 1 is 3. Minus 2 will be 1. So when you plug in pi over 2 into that red function, you got 1. Or you can use your calculator, okay? So um, I have pi half comma 1. I'm going to box it because I need it later. For x2, it's going to be x1 plus the period divided by 4. Again, it's all formula. I'm not making up stuff here. Well, x1 is pi half. The period is 4 pi. Right, right there, the period is 4 pi. Right? Divided by 4, which is pi. Right, 1 pi plus half of pi is 3 pi half. And then you plug it into your, your, your red function. You figure out y2. And that will be, it'll give you negative 5. So I have 3 pi half comma negative 5. <clears throat> One more, because I need at least 3, right? On the lecture, I did 5 of them, and I do recommend use 5. Um, maybe we need one more later, at least one more. But let's just do 3, because that's what they graded you on. So x3 will be x2 is recursive. So x2 plus period divided by 4. x2, we calculate it as 3 pi half. Period is 4 pi divided by 4. Half, 1 and a half plus 1, so um, 2, two and a half, which is 5 pi over 2. Right? And then you plug 5 pi over 2 into the red function there. You, you found out that is y3 is negative 2. Use your calculator. Make sure you put in your calculator in radian, in radian. So I have 5 pi half comma negative 2. That's my third point. All right, let's plot them. Now, um, here I have integers. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to erase this because I need in term of pi. Right? Maybe I need a zero. On your, on your exam, your problem turned out to be even nicer than than the one that I'm doing right now. Right? You you probably have integer, not pi, when you graph you graph it. So it's kind of nice, right? Um, pi is slightly harder. All right. So um, my period is four pi, right? So say if I call this is two pi, and this is four pi. In the middle would be what pi. Right, and then the middle again will be pi half. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call that one pi half, uh, two pi over two, which is pi, right? And then three pi over two, and then four pi over two, which is two pi, and then uh, five. Yeah, four pi over two. Five pi over two, six pi over two, seven pi over two, and then eight pi over two, which is four pi, right? That's how I, I do it when it turn when I turn my x axis into um pi in <clears throat> units. All right, uh, let's see. Um, pi half is one. Is it one or negative one? Wait, something wrong here. Oh, uh, hang on, hang on, something wrong. 
I have is pi half times one. Let me let me um double check. Pi half times one half is pi over four minus pi over four is zero. Cosine of zero is one. Wait, three times one is three. Minus two is one. Oh, sorry. Minus you're right. Minus two is one. That's right. Uh, I got it right. Now let, let me double check x2, x1, x2. If it's three pi, I think three pi half is negative two. Negative two. I had it plus in, in my calculator. I got that one plus pi over four instead of negative pi over four. So let me, then and then I had to fix my x3 when I plug in five pi over two, I got negative five. Right. Nothing like doing yourself, right? <clears throat> All right, so um, pi half is one. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, three pi half is negative two. Negative two right here. And then let's say um, five pi half is negative five. Negative. Okay, look at that. What is your amplitude? Uh, what is your uh, your what is the height of the graph? From negative five to one, that's six units, right? Like I said, it's gonna double your amplitude. Your graph should be the height of your graph should double your amplitude. Now that's not quite one period. Remember, well, your one period is four pi. Let me show you symmetry. Now, what you can do next is you can apply x4, x5, but it's, it's not part of your grade. Um, let me show you a, a way to do without doing x4 and x5 by symmetry. Watch. That is symmetry, right? That's a lie symmetry. That's an invisible lie. You just kind of use it so you can plot other points. Right? Later, you have to erase it. Um, do you agree that this right here had to be equal to that, right, due to symmetry? So all I have to do is just kind of reflect that point over the, the green line. Let's see, one, um, right here, right, so seven pi half. Seven pi half, right. Just have to, and then I want to reflect this one over the, the green line as well. Um, let's see, um, one and a half, one and a half, two, three, four, four and a half. So that's, all right, so uh, one, two, three, where am I? All right, let's do it like this, <laughs> one, Two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So somewhere around here. <clears throat> there you go. Right. That's no. That's one period, right? That's nine pi over two. That's nine pi over two. If there's more nine, remember this is eight pi over two, which is four pi, right? And nine pi over two. That's right there. And 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 if you check, if you check that length right there, that's four pi, right? Because you start at pi half, and you go over a little bit um by by pi half to with the four pi, so that's four pi, right? Now they want two. Two periods. They want two periods. Too bad they want two periods. So you've got to come up with another one. Again, by symmetry. Do not plot point. It takes you a long time. By symmetry again. Um, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll, I'll erase that later. So I'll draw a symmetry line there. Right. And then I need another. So that's my one period. I need another period. Um, so here had to be equal to here. Right. Let's see. Um, hmm. Two, so two, roughly two, so right here. You know, let me uh, let me put some stuff here, so it's gonna be negative. I have 
So this is negative 4 pi over 2, which is 2, negative 2 pi, right? Negative 4 pi. Um, so that means the one in the middle, this is pi or 2 pi over 2, right? Here. Oops. Negative 1 pi over 2, negative 2 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. Three pi over two, so negative six pi over two, here negative five pi over two, negative seven pi over two. That's how I do it. <clears throat> okay, so uh is right here. My red one should be here. Right. It, it, it kind of match up with those tick mark, like those tick mark. It, it can't be here, it can't be there. N not like that, right? So so you know where you know kind of where to put it. Um good, right? Uh, ne next one, next one, next one is going to be this one with this. So neg uh, 5 pi over 2, so it's going to be a negative, negative 5 pi over 2, right? Let's see what it The negative pi over 2 or negative 3 pi over 2. Well, we count. Let's count. Mm. 1. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, one, five, and. Sorry, my pencil ran out of um battery. All right, continue. Um. One, two, three, four, five, and a little bit more. So three pi hat, negative three pi hat right here. Yeah, it makes sense, right? From pi half to five pi half. Uh, here you have a little bit more here. So instead of going from uh, going all the way to negative pi pi half, you're gonna go back a little um one pi. So three pi half, negative three pi half, right? <clears throat> I promise on your exam is much nicer than this because it's integers. Here's because it's pi, it's more complicated. Um, all right, a few more. Keep doing your symmetry, right? So um, this part right here has to be equal to this. So it's gonna be, gonna be here, it's gonna be there. Again, it has to be matched with the tick mark. Um, and then go up here. It's right here, so here to here, pi, pi half, and then mm -hmm. let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. One, two, three, five, six. Okay, All right, right there. There you go, by symmetry. And then I have to erase all of these. <clears throat> all right, so um, make sure you practice graphing sine and cosine function at home. Answer these questions correctly. Then uh, be able to use symmetry to graph um, the repeating period. Let me give you another example. <clears throat> That's something similar on the exam. Um, so if I have something like this, um, given, let's, let's say psi, given psi of theta equal negative pi over nine, right? And um, theta is in quadrant, Four, say quadrant four. I want you to, to find. I want you to find um, cosine theta, cotangent of theta, tangent of theta, secant of theta, and then cosecant of theta. The 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 other remaining five, right? 
Well, the first thing first, I would recommend, let me move this over here because I need the space. The, the first thing I would recommend you do is grab your right triangle in the fourth quadrant. Whatever quadrant they gave you, here's four quadrant. So your right triangle will look like that. It's always connect to the x-axis, okay? I do not want to see this. Don't, don't, don't copy this. I do not want to see this. And then your theta right here, that's just wrong. That's just wrong. It's always connect to the x-axis. Hmm. And that's angle right there, that's your theta. We know that side theta is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So negative five over nine. Negative five must be here. And nine will be hypotenuse. Makes sense, right? And four quadrant, psi is negative. Can you calculate x right here? Yes, right? Pythagorean theorem. I know the x squared plus negative five squared equal nine squared, right? The sum of square of two legs equal to the hypotenuse square. x squared plus 25 equal 81 x squared equal 81 minus 25 is 56. So x is plus or minus the square root of 56. Now, which one do I choose? Look at the quadrant you're in. It's four quadrant. So x is positive, right? So x, choose x equal pos, positive root 56. Okay, so you got x equal square root of 56. Don't bother to reduce that. Is Leave it as it is. We're not going to, um, you don't have to, right? Cosine theta is, right, let's fill in some stuff. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. We just found the adjacent is square root of 56 over hypotenuse is 9. So now, be smart. Fill in something that you, you already know. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So all you have to do is flip that. So it'll be 9 over square root of 56. That way it saves you time, right? Cotangent. Uh, oh, by the way, side theta is negative 5 over 9. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So all you have to do is flip that. Right? So it'll be negative 9 over 5. Just flip, do not change the side, right? Cotangent. Cotangent is x over y. x is square root of 56. y is negative 5. And then tangent is flip of cotangent, right? So negative 5 over square root of 56. And you don't have to rationalize it. And for me, I'm not going to take points off. You don't res rationalize. Save you some time. Okay. All right. I'll give you one more. Um, example number three. Find the exact values. Make sure exact value. Oh, by the way, um, I, I say that I'm going to give you the unit circle that with the given degree. I suggest you try to um, try to familiarize yourself with the unit circle, okay? In radian and in degree. Problem A, I want you to find, say, psi inverse of psi of um, 5 pi over 6. Uh, say B, hmm. cotangent inverse of inverse of three pi over four. C, um, say um, cosine. Uh, let's see. Cosine of um, eight 
18 pi over 3. And, and one more, one more, um, the last one. Um, say I want to define a cotangent of cosine inverse of negative four over five. How's that? All right, the last one is the hardest of all four. Okay, sine inverse cos uh, of cosine of five pi over six. One thing at a time, let's do cosine. What's cos now? Cosine, the cosine function is go from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? So, so, so what's cosine of five pi over six? If you look on unit circle, cosine of five pi over six is, you know what, let me do this. Um. I'm going to do sine instead of cosine. Let's do that. Right. I know a lot of you is going to going to do this. A lot of you is going to oh my god, I'm going to I'm going to cancel that. But you can't. Remember, you can't do that like you cannot do that just now, right? Why? Because 5 pi over 6 is what is greater than 5 pi over 6 is greater than uh remember so 5 pi over 6 is not inside pi negative pi half to pi half, right? So what we, what we have to do is do not can if if it greater than that you cannot cancel, right? What you're going to do is you and you going to calculate. I think I didn't mention this in the class, but you need to calculate the one inside the parentheses first, right? So look up on the unit circle what size of phi pi over six. Phi pi over six side of phi pi over six is one half. Right, so psi inverse of one half is one half in between, and because and because one half is inside negative one to one, right? Because psi inverse have a domain from negative one to one, right? Then you can continue. You can continue. You look it up on your unit circle. Make sure psi inverse. You look up on quadrant one and quadrant four, right? So one half, if what angle give you psi inverse one half? It looks like it's going to be in quadrant one, right? Because psi is positive in quadrant one, right? One half is, the, the, the angle will be pi over three. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, pi over six. Pi over six. So your final answer is pi over six. Practice yourself with this. Maybe I'll give you another one to practice. Cosine inverse of cosine of five pi over six. Again, do not cancel these two. I know they look like they're next to each other and you wanted to cancel them, but you can't, cannot because five pi over six is not within negative pi half and pi half, right? You have to do from inside out. So try that at home. All right, now B, cos cotangent inverse of 3 pi over 4. Cotangent inverse, the domain is going to be in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So you all you have to do is look up on the unit, unit circle, um, cotangent inverse of 3 pi over 4. Uh, let me modify this problem a little bit. My, I apologize. Um, Cotangent of 3 pi over 4, right? Not the cotangent inverse. So you look it up on unit circle, 3 pi over 4. Because you don't you only have the degree, you have to convert it into degree, see which one you are looking at, right? Cotangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1, right? Remember, we don't have cotangent. What have you have you have, you have to look for what? going to be cosine over sine, right? X over Y. You take X value divided by Y value, you get cotangent. Cosine of 18 pi over 3. So let me erase that. Cotangent of, I'm sorry, cosine of 18 pi over 3. So uh, I have cosine. If I was you, I would write like this. 
let me um use in black here. I would rewrite it as what? 18 divided by 3 is 6 pi. So basically, you go around the unit circle three times. Go back to the original, right? What's cosine of 0? 1, right? So your answer is 1. Because you're going back to the original. So you keep going around and around three times. Right? 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi, so 6 pi. And you go back to the original uh, point. <clears throat> All right, the last one, which is the hardest one. Do you remember when you have something like this, it's not on your unit circle, you cannot look this up, right? So what you're going to do, you're going to set that thing inside of the parenthesis equal to theta. I hope you recall something like this. I did something like this. So we're going to say let cosine inverse of negative four fifth equal theta, leave a little space. Take cosine inverse both side because negative four over five is within negative one and one. I can can't. Oh, I'm sorry. Take cosine both side. Take cosine. And because negative four over fifth is between negative one and one, I can cancel those two function so that I have negative four fifth equal cosine theta. Your next step will, will you're gonna draw the the right triangle. Now, where should I draw? Is it quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four? Well, you have to look at your original theta, right? Theta is cosine inverse. Cosine inverse is what quadrant? One and two, right? And which one? One or two? Two, right? Because it is cosine inverse negative four over fifth is a negative value. So second quadrant, you have a negative x, right? <clears throat> Draw a right triangle. That's right there. That's your theta. Cosine theta is negative four over five. So negative four, that's the adjacent. Five is hypotenuse. Can you find y? Yes, you can, right? y squared plus, you can just say 4 squared because negative 4 squared, the same thing as 4 squared, equal 5 squared. Um, y squared plus 16 equal 25. Y equal 9, y squared equal 9. Y equal plus minus 3. <clears throat> plus 3 or minus 3? Positive 3, right? Because in the second quadrant, y is positive. So y equals 3. We almost done. Remember, we let that thing equal to theta. So all you have to do is looking for cotangent of theta. So what's cotangent of theta? Cotangent is x over y, right? Which is negative 4 over 5. And then you're done. That's it. That's your answer. Negative 4 over 5. Oh, um, x over y, x over y, x over 3, negative 4 over 3. I need to take a break. I've been working um, nonstop since noon. Um, negative 4 over 3. That would be your final answer. All right, one last thing. Um, When you're asking to finding the arc length, <clears throat> remember the arc length formula? S equal R times theta. Theta has to be in radian. Okay. If we give you degree, you're supposed to change that into radian before you do the computation. All right. All right. Good luck.